for a brief moment, I was considering to stop making content for this channel. Not that it would matter much because I have less than 10 subs, but I enjoy making videos and talking about societal issues. My view count and sub count wasn't the reason why I was considering quitting, mostly that I've just been very uninspired to produce lately. But alas, the fire is rising once again. I have changed a good bit politically over the past year, even over the past couple of years, and it was a slow change. That's probably why I wanted to make this channel and talk about interesting things related to America, society, and culture. I'm more left-wing now than I was a few years ago, and I'm glad I am because I believe my mind has been open to more things than it was prior. To get to the point of this video, one issue being brought up more and more is that the American dream is dying. Both left-wing and right-wing media have brought this up and discussed this issue, and I feel like throwing in my two cents. Currently, a shitload of Americans are crippled with debt. Debt of all kinds, student loans, credit cards, medical bills, cars, and so on. I'll admit and side with the right-wingers on the issue that credit cards and automobile debt is usually self-inflicted and avoidable, so most people with those issues don't deserve too much sympathy at all and won't really get any from me, but in terms of student loans and medical debt, nobody should have that kind of debt at all. Over half a million Americans file bankruptcy due to medical bills every year, so it's got to be several million by now who have and are still struggling as a result. The average amount of student loan debt amongst American college grads is approaching $40,000, and that's debt you can't get out of with bankruptcy. For these reasons, it's obvious to me why America is seeing less growth and less entrepreneurship. I don't give a fuck about the bullshit numbers Fox News and CNN put out about how there's a 4% unemployment rate and 200,000 jobs created this quarter or you know the other things that they say. Like most of the time, those are lousy, low-paying jobs with little to no benefits. The numbers they don't discuss are how many people are committing suicide and how many people are struggling with debt or living paycheck to paycheck, which I hear now is over 75% of Americans. Yeah, that means over three-fourths of your citizens ain't living the dream, assholes. If you have an age group, the age group, that is usually the ones that are more lively and counted upon to take risks and create new businesses and inventions, let's say they're around 18 to 45, and you put debt burdens on them or a lack of a social safety net, then it shouldn't be too surprising that your youth are plainly unable to produce like previous generations were. One of the biggest lies that probably was a truth generations ago but no longer is that if you work hard you'll make it in America. Bull shit. There are hardworking people all over this country, some working more than one job, and they run the risk of never seeing their lives improve at all. They may end up working until they're dead. People working on construction sites or at Walmart or in warehouses are probably never going to experience something better. Now, I'm obviously not putting down any of those professions or the, you know, the people doing those jobs because I do that kind of labor now myself, and in many ways, those jobs are essential to the economy to keep this crazy, complicated system running. That's why I and you should be for protesting and voting in policies and politicians who will do more for the proletariat, higher minimum wage, affordable health care for all, more paid vacation time by law, and so on. At least implementing good policies for your working class is a great way to secure the American dream and make things better for individuals and their families, the backbone of America. Related to what I just mentioned, other countries have addressed these issues long ago. Australia has a minimum wage that's almost $20 an hour, and they haven't had an economic recession in almost 30 years. Canada has a more pronounced middle class and more college graduates than the United States. France has four to five weeks of paid vacation for all workers by law, and so do other European countries. As a result of those things, and the lower cost of college, if not completely tuition free, and free healthcare, they have higher income mobility amongst their citizens and people moving up the socioeconomic ladder than we do in America. Let that sink in. And we try to sit here and get lectured by the media that we're better than all other nations. Like, better for who? The rich? Sure, they're having a fucking blast, but if you're in the working class, the likelihood of you living in a constant economic struggle is very high. Our tax system is also crap. We have spent trillions on war for nearly two fucking decades with nothing to show for it. That money could have been spent here on education, healthcare, and infrastructure. We have crony capitalism as the new norm, or at least becoming the new norm, fully embraced and supported by the Republican Party. Tax breaks incentives galore for big profitable companies to bribe them to move in and give people crappy jobs who will in turn pay the tax burden. Big companies win, the working class loses. 
even though they try to disguise it as a win because they got a job that pays fourteen twenty five an hour. There are less people in unions now than before. Even though I hear unions are planning to make a comeback, the collapse of unions in the U.S. has led to the issues the working class has faced for decades. Without a union, who is going to fight on your behalf to ensure your employer is kept in check, gives you the benefits you deserve, your labor is the reason they make a profit. And then you have to, of course, bring up the issue of the inevitable recession. From both left and right wing economic think tanks, they say this next one is going to be way worse than the one in 2008. I believe it, but I have no idea how it's going to go or what will be the catalyst that lights it all up. The student loan debt bubble, credit card debt, who knows. There is a way to curb it and make it a lot less painful. Richard D. Wolf has discussed this along with other lefty YouTubers. During the Great Depression, there were ration cards and job programs to work on America's infrastructure. They were able to accomplish that back then by taxing the rich a lot. Doing that ensured the masses of hungry, jobless people didn't rise up and burn everything down. By taxing the rich, feeding all the hungry, and trying to employ as many as possible, they saved capitalism. We're going to have to do something like that again. High taxes on the rich, invest in new small green energy businesses, infrastructure jobs, unemployment safety net, ration cards, and so on. And obviously end all our wars overseas, but that should have been done years ago. The next recession doesn't have to be as god-awful as, pre as predicted if we come together to ensure everybody is okay and is at least not homeless or starving. If we can't do this, and if half the American people, or 40% even, continue to be ignorant and vote against their own class interests, then it might be time t for the individual to finally throw in the towel. It might be time to renounce your citizenship and bounce. The next election and recession will make that pretty clear as to which direction America is heading. And I'm not even talking about issues like race or immigration, just economic. But there are a lot of issues at play now. I'm considering this more and more now, just leaving the country and starting a new life somewhere else. I'm not sure where, though. And another thing to keep in mind, further proving another point that makes America inferior to other nations. If you are still a U.S. citizen and earn money overseas, you still have to file a tax return to the American IRS. We are one of the three nations that do that to our people. Us. North Korea and Eritrea. So it's one of those things that you'll probably have to suffer through for the next few years while you gain residency and citizenship in a new country, but make moves to renounce your U.S. citizenship at the same time to jump ship and pay your exit tax as soon as possible. I see a lot more people doing that in the future, and the exit tax to renounce American citizenship is only going to get higher through the coming years. It's over $2,300 now. So yeah, I firmly believe the American dream is either dying or already died years ago and that we're just on borrowed time and falling for an illusion of what used to be. More people are being crushed with debt, not producing or creating new things, not starting families, and a recession is coming, all leading to a nation's total decline. I'll include some other videos that inspired me to make this one, just so that you can see where I'm coming from. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Do you believe I'm wrong or glossed over an issue or two, or do you believe I'm totally right? Let me know in the comments below.